We've been promised data at the last N collaborations that you know next next time we meet we'll have LHC data, and it's taken a bit longer than we hoped, but we really do have it this time. So this is like the energy that's in the, uh, the 0.3 outside the 1.2. So this is like this is like. Uh, Say that again. Sorry. Well, so you take the 1.5 jet, which is 50 GeV. Yeah. I just get the hint that maybe the standard model is actually beginning to creak at the seams a bit at the moment. I mean, I get a feeling there's a lot of. A lot of things happening in particle physics at the moment, and it's not just the LHC. And th th there is more to particle physics than the LHC. Flavor physics in a warped extra dimension, status of flavor constraints on beyond the standard model scenarios, J site mu mu from seven TV PP collisions in Atlas, performance with the first data, J site mu mu from seven TV PP collisions in Atlas, physics with the first data, a brief review of a possible fourth generation world to come. Status and prospects of Super Kick B and Bell 2, CKM Fitter, Summer 2010 Collection, the CKM Matrix Status and Sensitivity to New Physics. Non universal, non anomalous U1 prime in a model with anomaly mediated Susie breaking searches for gauge mediated supersymmetry in the Tevatron. It looks a little bit awkward because we're already in the Tevatron in different years. Oh, well, we want a second one too. About three or four weeks ago, a rumor came out that uh, Tabatron would uh, present evidence that they'd actually seen the Higgs. And then a few days later, there was a disclaimer from Tabatron saying, it's nothing but a rumor. Um, people are still wondering if there's something to it or not. Results from the high resolution flies eye experiment, results from the telescope array experiment, the trouble with ultra high energy cosmic rays. It's an interesting <laughs> conference because it's the beginning of the transition at the highest energies from the Tevatron, where it's been for the last uh, 25 years, to the LHC. So you're seeing the continued maturation of one program <laughs> as another one is ramping up and getting ready to take over. The International Design Study for the Neutrino Factory, a research and development program towards an energy frontier muon collider and LHC machine upgrades. That's, uh, that's all of the last session. And that's just Saturday afternoon. That's just um, that's just between quarter past four and six o'clock. So the standard model cannot predict the Higgs boson mass. So we need to be determined by experiments. At the moment, at, at low mass, they're saying they could exclude a Higgs if it were produced four times more often than we actually expect it to be produced. And so right, the sort of next step is to look at the high mass results. Um, so in layman's terms, they haven't found it. So layman's, <laughs> <laughs> if they found it, we'd, we'd have heard. This uh, energy will become uh, a, a powerful uh, signature for new physics, like supersymmetry. So we in the central of the forward region by using uh, jet PV balance, and we see some little discrepancy in the it's really quite special. I mean, it works on it for so long to, to see, you know, finally see plots that have data on, and you know, we keep saying it, but it's just wonderful. This is what we're in the business for. Uh, LHC, I started to deliver first physics. Shut I think probably the best best session of any conference I've ever been to ever in my whole career. Put it that way. <laughs>
mankind is not mankind anymore if they're not curious about just why we are here, why the universe was built as it's built, how it developed and if we wouldn't ask that question, that very fundamental question, which don't really have any practical application, then there's just something very fundamental missing, like like art, like like hu humanity, really. The amount of knowledge that we've attained in the last hundred years and before that, the hundred years before that, imagine if we just stopped and said that it wasn't important. Imagine all we'd be missing. I mean, there's there's so much more to know. Cambridge, Milan, Milan, CERN, CERN, Paris, and Paris here. So it's only the fourth move. We know that to really get a full understanding of things means going up in energy by a factor of maybe a million, billion times more energy than we have at the LHC today. To really answer sort of all the questions we think would be interesting. It's inconceivable today to reach those energies, but then 400 years ago, um, it was inconceivable to even talk about particle physics. Um, and it was certainly in, inconceivable to talk about accelerating particles or anything like that. So it's really difficult to predict what's going to happen on, let's say, on the really long time scale, which is the time scale that you need for answering these questions. This is the final exam of my PhD. For the next couple of years, I'm reasonably secure in that I, I have a postdoc here at UCL. I'm really keen to get back into, into doing more work and getting involved with data from the LHC and doing more physics, basically. With LHC, we're making a very small step in the really sort of the, in the grand scheme of of how our knowledge is built up. Um, but it's built up by making many small steps, and then occasionally something you think was a small step turns out to really revolutionize how you think about the world. Um, small steps are getting more and more expensive these days, that's the problem. Uh, but uh, if you don't make them, if you don't push the limits, um, then sort of things grind to a halt. Uh, and then we certainly won't know the answers to all the questions. This is where my parents don't pick up the phone. <laughs> Hello, it's me. Just thought I'd give you a ring and let you know that I passed. Out of the people I know who finished a PhD at the same time as me, I, I can only think of one or two others who've yeah, managed to find jobs see. in the UK. A lot of them have either gone to US universities yeah, yeah. or moved to CERN. You're listening to today on uh, BBC Radio 4 with uh, Sarah Montague and Justin Webb. The government spends more than £4 billion each year on scientific research. Well, not any longer. The Business Secretary, Vince Cable, will argue today why and how that should be cut. He joins us now from Westminster. Good morning. Right here. The suggestion is that you're going to need to find cuts of about 35%. Is that right? No, it's not. Um, and that's way in excess of what we're talking about. But nonetheless, you're, you're quite right in your basic point that there is less money and we've got to try and find ways of preserving the Back in the 80s, there were similar problems with science funding and funding really fell through the 80s and the, uh, the early uh, 90s. And the consequences were clear. Universities ran down in their, in their status and in their infrastructure. Young people were leaving the country, that dreaded phrase, brain dreams. There's a danger of a really big mistake being made here. That we, we have, uh, the UK is amazing at science. It's one of the things we really have going for us. And if we lose it now in some incompetent panic because we've got a financial crisis, it's the worst thing in the world. And as scientists, you know, we don't like protesting. It's not something culturally inbred in science, it's certainly not in me. But, you know, we have a duty to tell the truth the way it is, and this is, there will be a consequence. It's not a threat, it's just a fact. That's what's going to happen. Bright young people will not come here, bright young people will leave, bright old people will leave. There's plenty of jobs out there. The rest of the world wants science. We don't, we're screwed. Investment is just over half 
of 1% of our GDP, half of 1% of our GDP invested in the future of science, science culture, the knowledge that it brings, the quality of an informed public, and of course, the impact on the economy. It's, it's quite possible that in two years, I will have to choose between leaving the UK and leaving physics, basically. Will we finally, at some point, really come to understand things? I hope so. I think, uh, I think it's possible. Uh, it just may take a while. Tell them about nanotechnology. What's the big deal with nanotechnology? Unexpected properties, apparently. So. <laughs>